Welcome back to Secondhand Overland. I'm your host, Matt Kester. A little over six months ago, we made a move that set us at odds with overlanders everywhere when we ditched our rooftop tent. Not casually, mind you. I even went so far as to make a video about it where I introduced our rooftop tent replacement, the Double Tent Cot by Camprite. This wasn't a product exchange either. We bought the Double Tent Cot with our own money, albeit at a significant discount by buying one never used from a seller on offer up for $100. Currently, the Double Tent Cot retails at a shade under 480. So why this product? Well, even though we were done sleeping on the roof, we still wanted to be up off the ground. At first, I thought of ground tent and cots, but I didn't really want to expend the resources on a quick pitch tent plus cots. That would have been closer to six or seven hundred dollars. Plus, neither of us was excited at the prospect of having to put up a tent and some cots. Enter the all-in wonder known as the Double Tent Cot. It promised to alleviate all of our woes by incorporating features we liked about certain setups and left behind ones that we really didn't care for or need. We've taken it from Overland Expo in the fall, to the Chiricahua Mountains in the winter, to the beaches of Baja in the spring, and a lot of other places in between. First, what is the double tent cot? Well, it's a two-person sleep system that incorporates a cot and an all-weather tent, and it folds up like a letter, yet can still be a challenge to find a place to stow it when you're driving. For the most part, ours rides on the roof, unless Nicole is going out by herself, in which case it can fit easily crossways in the back. At 51 pounds and 56 inches across, it's not the easiest thing to have to lift up onto the roof of the Discovery. When we get to camp is where this thing shines, however. Not only is set up quicker than our previous rooftop tent, but its placement can be optimized to suit your particular campsite. Want to put it where the view is good so you can get that gram-worthy shot? No problem, you can do that. Then, after you've satisfied your followers, you won't have to endure an evening in a rooftop tent on a windy cliff. You can just drag the tent around to the other side of your vehicle and use it as a windbreak. Also, on those really cold evenings, you can drag it a little bit closer to the fire and scavenge some heat. Although, this is probably not recommended and unsafe AF, considering all the fabric in the cot and the tent are nylon. Another feature that really stands out is one for those times when you've just rolled into camp early and aren't ready to go to bed, but you want to hang out and enjoy the peace and solitude that you've worked so hard to achieve. No worries, you can leave the tent unpitched, pick one end up, and use it as a double lounger. Those were some of the best moments of our recent Baja trip. When it's time to go to bed, lay it back down, put in a couple of poles, put the rain fly on if needed, and throw your bedding in and you're good to go. Like any other product us mere mortals can afford, Camprite has had to make some design compromises along the way. Some of these were to improve certain functionality prioritized over other functions. Some of it was obviously to keep the cost down, and others I imagine were to keep the weight down. First up, and probably the most polarizing piece in this whole design, is the longitudinal center bar. This is the necessary evil of this product. Without it, you and the person sleeping next to you would fall to the middle of the cot and get stuck together in the divot created by your own body weight. Sort of like an air mattress. There's also one other thing that, that bar does, for people like us who have a dog. It forces the dog to choose a side. Normally at home or before when we were in a rooftop tent, she could lay right in the middle. Obviously, trying to lie on a steel bar is probably not the most comfortable thing for her either, and it forces Cece into having to choose whose foot she sleeps at. If she chooses Nicole, well, that's fine by me because Nicole's got length to spare on her side. If the dog goes my way, however, I'll spend the evening with my knees jammed into my chest as the tent isn't all that much longer than I am tall. Moving on, here's a point where we can answer a question from one of you guys. James and Natalie, our friends from 2A Overland, wanted to know what the mattress situation on the inside is like and if it's suitable for side or stomach sleepers. While it doesn't include what I would call a mattress, there is a thin layer of foam inside the bottom of the cot. Although, I feel like it's there more to insulate than to pad. We added our Thermorest Z-Lite backpacking mats to give it just a little bit extra cushioning and to insulate. However, it's not up to mattress levels of comfort. This could be improved upon by using one of the thicker self-inflating camp mats from brands like Thermorest or Xbed that feature a four inch inflation depth. I did put a link in the description below to some of those mats just in case you're interested. Once you're on the inside, there's one thing to consider and that's ventilation. On a night where you don't need much more than mosquito protection, it's not bad and you can really open it up and enjoy the breeze. 
However, when you do need more protection, when it's colder or it's windy or the rain's gonna happen and you have to zip it up, ventilation decreases significantly. Couple this with the fact that it's got a relatively small air volume to begin with and condensation starts to become something to contend with. This is especially true if you're needing to use the rain fly. As far as performance in the rain, I really can't say as we haven't encountered anything other than a mild sprinkle so far, but as time has progressed, we've become better at figuring out how to keep the tent ventilated with the rain fly on. It's been a learning curve and something we never really had to contend with in our rooftop tent with its breathable canvas construction. Also, the weight of this nylon is kind of thin relative to what you'd expect in an expedition grade tent. Again, this is probably something that was sacrificed to keep the weight down but it has started to show some signs of wear over our frequent use six month test. It happened one day when I was trying to crawl in from the back. It's since become like the de facto foot end of the tent as it now tends to sag just a little bit more than the front. Finally, my last real gripe has to do with the space or lack there of it. The inner peak on our rooftop tent was damn near four feet tall. Plenty of room to sit up and lounge around that's really not an option in the double cot tent. It's pretty much where you go to lie down and go to sleep. There just isn't a whole lot of headroom to sit up even in the very middle of the tent. I can't sit up straight without my head touching the ceiling. After that very lengthy and exhaustive list of gripes, you're probably thinking that I'm beginning to regret switching to it from a rooftop tent and you'd be dead wrong. If I had to choose right now one or the other, I would pick the Camp Right double tent cot over the soft shell rooftop tent we had previously. You see, for all of the Camp Right shortcomings, they don't irritate me more than those of the rooftop tent, especially when cost is taken into account. You can literally buy three or four Camp Right double tent cots for the price of a rooftop tent, which is good since our testing has shown they don't have expedition grade durability. That trade-off comes with an upside though, and they are lighter, take up much less space on the roof rack, can set up faster than soft shell rooftop tents, and most importantly, don't have to spend their existence stuck to your roof, presenting you with a very irritating vertical handicap. I think Camp Right definitely has something here, and I do believe it might be worth their while to start developing a higher grade version of this and their single tent cots. I know I'd be willing to consider paying more for features like a transpermeable membrane upper, kind of like Gore-Tex that would potentially keep the tent waterproof, yet still allowing it to breathe. Also, perhaps there's a way to look at constructing the frame out of materials with a higher strength to weight ratio or just stronger or thicker steel and replacing plastic hardware with metal. That would be the difference in taking this product from being a weekend warrior favorite to a strong expedition grade contender. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Do we leave anything out? Were there things you wanted to know that maybe we can answer in a follow-up? Let us know in the comments section. As always, I'm Matt Kester. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Secondhand Overland. Till next time, be good.